In this video, we're gonna talk about negative inventory. Now, the exercise we're gonna follow along with is over here on the right side of my screen, and this is pulled from our Advanced Level Pro Advisor Certification course. If you would like more information about that course after we go through the exercise, be sure to click on the link below in the description. Let's dive right in and read through our scenario today. While checking the products and services list, you notice that some inventory products have a negative number on hand. How did this happen and what can you do about it? Let's take a look. You will need to be in the sample company to do this exercise. Now, if you're not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, be sure to click on the link below in the description. We have the sample company pulled up here on the left hand side. Once you sign in, this is what it will look like. So let's go ahead and get started with the exercise. How could you end up with a negative inventory um, or a negative amount of inventory? Let's take a look. First thing we're going to do is we're going to recreate the problem to quickly see the number of items currently on hand for each uh, inventory product. We first need to visit the products and services list. So to get there, we're going to click on the gear icon and then select products and services. The gear icon is on the top right corner of your screen. Go ahead and click on that. And then under lists, you can select products and services. Now as an uh, aside here, there are other ways that you could get to this. You could have hovered over sales and clicked on it here. Um, in the in QBO, there's lots of different ways to get to the same place. So just know that that pathway is just one of the ways to get here. So we can use the filter to view only the inventory products. So we're going to click on the filter icon and then in the type field, click on inventory. So here is that filter icon right here. Click on that. And then in the type field, click on that and then select inventory. And then we want to go ahead and click on the green apply button. And now you will see that the resulting list is showing only the four inventory items and it shows how much of each product has currently on hand. You'll notice that with the rock fountain that there are two um, currently in the inventory. So to replenish his stock, Craig buys three more rock fountains, but let's see what happens if he records the purchase incorrectly. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we want to create an expense. So to do that, we're going to click on the plus two button and then select expense. So the plus new button on the top left corner, go ahead and click on that. And then under vendors, click on expense. And once this comes up, we're going to go ahead and fill it out. Here we go. In the payee field, we want to select Tim Phillip Masonry. So click into that. You can either start typing or you can scroll down um, to his name. Once you find it, go ahead and select it. You will notice that as soon as you select his name, that a purchase order pops up in this drawer. We're going to ignore it for now, but definitely keep it open as we're going to use it as we go down um, a little bit further in this exercise. Now, the correct way to purchase inventory products is to use the item details grid. You can see there's this category details grid. It's currently expanded. And then this item details uh, which grid, which is collapsed at the moment. But this is what you would use. But let's see what happens if Craig uses the category grid instead. So in the category column in the on the first row, we're going to select fountain and garden lighting. So click into it um, two times and you could scroll down just a little bit. You have job expenses, job materials, and then fountain and garden lighting. Go ahead and select that. In the description field, we're going to type three rock fountains. So click into that description field, type three rock fountains. Now in the purchase order pop-up, you can see that we previously agreed on a price of $125. What if Craig thought that this was just for reference and used it to calculate the total amount? Let's do it that way. Let's assume that that's what he thought and we are going to do it that way. So in the amount field, we're going to type three times 125. So click into that amount field, three times 125, 
when you hit the tab key out of that field, you will notice that QBO has automatically made the calculation and up to $375. We're going to go ahead and click on save and close. We will assume that everything is done. And so uh, save and close is down here on the bottom right corner of the sample company. And that expense has been saved. Now back on the products and services list, you can see that this purchase had zero effect on the quantity of the rock fountains. It is still showing as two. Even though Craig specified that he purchased three, he didn't do it in the item details grid and so QBO just doesn't recognize it. So what happens if Craig sells some rock fountains? Let's say he sold three rock fountains to Freeman Sporting Goods, one to each of their locations. So let's go ahead and create the sales receipt for those three fountains. We're gonna click on the plus new button once again and then click on sales receipt. The plus new button on the top left corner, once again, click on that and then under customers, you will see sales receipt, select that. Once it appears for us, we are going to, in the customer field, select Freeman Sporting Goods. So click into that uh, drop down, just scroll down a tiny bit. You want the one that says Freeman Sporting Goods, not the other two. These are the other locations um, and subcategories of, um, sub customers, excuse me, of Freeman Sporting Goods. So this is the one that we want to select. You will see their information appear. We're gonna leave the sales receipt date as is, but of course in real life, you wanna make sure that it matches the date of the actual sales. So um, leave that as is. Let's go ahead and fill out the rest of the, um, or the chart down here, the grid down here with the rock fountains. So in the product service field on the first line, we're going to select rock fountain. Click into it, um, maybe just type this time, um, rock for rock fountain. Once you find it, go ahead and click on it. Let's add a little bit more in the description field to uh, say that this one is for the main location. So in the description field, you want to type Rock Fountain dash main location. So it already says Rock Fountain. Just add a dash main location. It was only one that was sold to them. This is the price. And so this line is all complete. Now we need to repeat those steps, this time indicating the other locations on each line. So click into that second one. You can use the drop down or you can um, and scroll or you can type it in. Either way is fine. Once you find it though, go ahead and click on it. We're going to, in the description field, put one of the other locations, which is Twin Lane. That is one of them. This information is good. And so we have one more to add for the other location. I believe it's the Ocean View, the Ocean View Road location. So let's click into it, find Rock Fountain. And then in here, you're going to type dash Ocean View Road. Okay, now we have indicated that we have the three Rock Fountains have been purchased and they have, um, they're showing each of the locations. So let's just go ahead and click on save and close at this point. Uh, click on the down arrow and then select save and close. And now that sales receipt has been saved. Now you'll notice that even though you are selling more than you know you have on hand, you don't get any kind of warning or error message at this point. And um, even though you know you have more in hand because he purchased those three extra with a total of five, now it is showing QBO did not recognize that purchase of those three. So now it's showing as a negative one right here. However, you can see the negative quantity reflected in the product service list, as I mentioned just now. So QBO did not, let's just recap, QBO did not recognize that expense that uh, Craig had filled out. It was filled out incorrectly for the purchase of those three from Tim Phillip Masonry. It did not recognize it. So the quantity on hand stayed as two. He just, so it, he had a total of five on hand in real life, even though his expense was recorded incorrectly. Then he just sold three to Freeman Sporting Goods. Again, QBO is not recognizing that there were five total. It only thought that there were two. And so now it is pulling out those three that he just sold to Freeman Sporting Goods. And now it is showing as a negative one. So definitely some problems here, but let's go ahead and fix it.
There are two ways to fix the issue. If you do not know which purchase transaction created the problem, you could do an inventory quantity adjustment. So to do that, you would click on the plus new button and then select inventory quantity adjustments. So let's click on that plus new button. And then in the other column, there is that inventory quantity adjustment. Go ahead and click on that. When it appears, we are going to, in the products field, select rock fountain. So click into the product field. You can either click the down arrow and select it, or you could type it in, either way is fine. Go ahead and click on it. And you, will, you would do a physical count of the inventory and find that there is actually those two rock fountains left in stock. So entering this number under new quantity will change the quantity, the in will adjust the change in quantity to three. So in this new quantity here, if you entered that there were two, it would automatically change this to three, um, the change. That's how much of a change it is, which was the three that he had sold to um, Freeman Sporting Goods. In our case, however, we do know which transaction created the problem, so let's correct it that other way. So this is one way that you could correct it if you don't know what transaction messed up every uh, messed up the inventory levels, um, but we are going to do it the other way because we do know which transaction is that expense that we created earlier. So let's go ahead and click on the X to close out of it. It's going to ask if you want to leave without saving. Go ahead and click on the green yes button. All right, so let's go back and fix that expense transaction. Um, from the left navigation bar, we're gonna hover over expenses and then select expenses. So over here is that expenses, hover over that and then select expenses. If you get any pop-ups, just go ahead and click out of them. Just QBO trying to be extra helpful and give you extra information. Now the expense that we just created will be at the top. It's this one right here. So we're going to click on view edit. So I'm going to need to scroll over. It is this first line. It is the last column on that line. Click view edit to have it pulled up for us. Now what Craig should have done is added the purchase order from the drawer. This would have added the rock fountain to the item details grid where it actually belongs. So on the purchase order in the drawer, we're going to click add. That is this right here. Go ahead and select that. Once you do, this drawer will collapse for you and you will see that this information has been um, added here for us. Now when hovering over the quantity, QBO will display how many of these items are currently in stock. So it is showing it here as two, but we want to change this to three. So click into it and change that to three. That's how much he had purchased here for this um, transaction. Now we no longer need this item here in the category details grid. So we're going to click on the trash can icon on that line. So right here, go ahead and click on that trash can. And now we're showing that three at the 125 rate, uh, purchase for 375 um, is in the item details grid, so everything is done now correctly. So let's go ahead and click on the save and close button. That's the green button on the bottom right corner. Click on that. And now that expense has been saved. Now let's go back to our product and services list. Let's do it through the gear icon. So click on the gear icon and then cl uh, click on products and services. Go ahead and select that. And then under list, select products and services. Now here you can see that the rock fountain quantity now shows a, or the rock fountain now shows a quantity of two. So if I scroll down here, here is that rock fountain. It is showing as two because remember he had purchased three from Tim Phillip Masonry and then he sold three to Freeman Sporting Goods. So we started with two at the beginning of this exercise and because of those transactions, we are ending up with two. And that's how you would fix negative inventory. Now, if you like this exercise and you want to do more like it, or if you would like more information about that advanced level Pro Advisor certification course, be sure to click on the link below in the description, and I will see you in the next exercise.